Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we will explain cavernous sinus thrombosis. Cavernous sinus thrombosis is a rare life threatening disorder and uh, can be fatal even with standard medical and surgical management. Uh, cavernous sinus thrombosis is the formation of thrombus that is clot within the cavernous sinus that blocks a vein that runs through it. It can be either a septic or aseptic. Uh, septic cavernous sinus thrombosis is a rapidly developing intravascular inflammation caused by invading bacteria with an infectious origin that may be an ontogenic infection. The invading bacteria stimulates the clotting pathways resulting in a septic cavernous sinus thrombosis. It then affects the cavernous sinus and its structures. These are the contents of cavernous sinus. Within the lumen of the cavernous sinus, uh, past the horizontal segment of the internal carotid artery, the sympathetic plexus and the sixth cranial nerve, whereas in the outer layer of the lateral wall of the carotid sinus, the cranial nerves that is a culomotor, uh, trochlear, first and second branches of the trigeminal nerve pass through it. The superior and if inferior of thalamic veins drain the orbital region and it is via these veins that uh, orbital abscesses may spread to the cavernous sinus. Infections may uh, travel freely because there are no walls in the veins of the head and neck. Either from the infraorbital vein into the infraorbital space or from the inferior and superior ophthalmic vein in both direction. Infections travel uh, from the inferior ophthalmic vein and superior ophthalmic vein to the common ophthalmic vein and then through the superior orbital fissure to the uh, cavernous sinus causing cavernous sinus thrombosis. In most cases of cavernous sinus thrombosis, the eyes are affected. The signs and symptoms include swelling, redness or uh, irritation around one or both eyes, uh, proptosis, ptosis, uh, congestion of the retinal veins of the eye may lead to decrease uh, or loss of vision. On clinical examination, any of the structures that receive innervation from these nerves uh, may be affected, but the abducent nerve is most likely to be affected, uh, causing the lateral rectus muscle palsy because its exposure in cavernous sinus is greatest in the lateral component. Similarly, sensory component of the innervation is also affected as numbness or paresthesia around uh, eyes, nose uh, and forehead. In this uh, clinical photograph, infraorbital space uh, abscess with extension into the periorbital and orbital spaces. The same patient four hours later with continued uh, spread of infection to the superficial and deep temporal spaces, cavernous sinus and the opposite side. The same patient two weeks uh, later, on voluntary gaze towards the affected right side, both eyes turn towards the right, demonstrating that the right abducent nerves are not injured. The most common initial symptom of the cavernous sinus thrombosis is a headache. Other symptoms of cavernous sinus thrombosis include a high temperature vomiting, Caesar's changes in mental state such as feeling very confused. These symptoms usually occur if cavernous sinus thrombosis is left untreated or if an infection causing the condition spreads throughout the body. Without treatment, most people with cavernous sinus thrombosis will become increasingly drowsy and eventually fall into a coma. These signs and symptoms are restricted to cavernous sinus thrombosis. So when these signs and symptoms are present, they differentiate cavernous sinus thrombosis from other orbital infections. In current practice, CT scan or MRI with contrast is the modality of choice to confirm the diagnosis of cavernous sinus thrombosis and to differentiate it from alternatives such as uh, orbital cellulitis, which may have a similar clinical presentation. The literature suggests using both CT and MRI, CT first and then MRI, especially if the CT is not definitive. MRI with MR venogram uh, is the preferred imaging choice as the MRV will show the absence of venous flow in the affected cavernous sinus. Cavernous sinus thrombosis has a 
high mortality even today like arbitral cellulitis cavernous sinus thrombosis requires aggressive medical and surgical care cavernous sinus thrombosis is a rare and life threatening condition that requires immediate medical attention however the patient can recover and continue everyday life with timely treatment the mainstay of therapy for cavernous sinus thrombosis is early and aggressive antibiotic administration although staphylococcus aureus is the usual cause broad, broad spectrum uh, and antibiotic coverage for gram uh, positive gram negative without waiting for the outcome of the cultures if anaerobic infection is suspected uh, and anaerobic coverage should also be aided empiric antibiotic therapy uh, should include a penicillin resistant so penicillin plus a third or fourth generation cephalosporin iv antibiotics are recommended for minimum of 3 to 4 weeks controversy exists on the use of anti coagulation for cavernous sinus thrombosis no prospective trials has been performed on the use of anti coagulation for cavernous sinus thrombosis uh, due to rarity of this syndrome however some retrospective studies have shown a decrease in mortality and clot uh, propagation by anti coagulation uh, limited evidence uh, suggests that uh, anti coagulant drugs are probably safe and may be beneficial for people with sinus thrombosis therefore anti coagulation with heparin should be considered since the goal is to prevent further thrombosis and to reduce the incidence of septic emboli corticosteroids may be helpful to reduce inflammation and edema and should be considered as an adjunctive therapy uh, they should be used after antibiotic coverage surgery on uh, the cavernous sinus is technically difficult and has never been shown to be helpful the primary source of infection should be drained if feasible uh, if not uh, treated properly and well in time it lead to serious complications up to 1 in 3 people with cavernous sinus thrombosis may die some people who uh, survive it are left with ongoing symptoms uh, a seizures and severe headache it will appear when uh, the cavernous sinus will not treated well in time uh, it can also uh, cause uh, further problems with uh, vision blood clots and uh, infections uh, problems with vision are a common complication of cavernous sinus thrombosis uh, some people have a degree of permanent visual impairment uh, although permanent blindness is uncommon uh, there is a also a risk that another blood clot may develop elsewhere in the body for example in the leg uh, this is that is known as a deep venous thrombosis uh, lungs uh, known as a pulmonary embolism a uh, brain this triggers a stroke these conditions are very serious and can be fatal complications can uh, also occur if the infection spreads beyond the cavernous sinuses uh these complications can include meningitis thank you wish you best of luck